Hi, everyone. Welcome back. You're still with us here on the Sea Morning Show. We're entering the final hour of our show. And as we've been talking about all morning long, today is Hari Anak Nasional or National Children's Day. It is celebrated annually on July the 23rd. And as we all know, that this year's special day carries a theme. It is Protected Children Advancing Indonesia. And it highlights the importance of Indonesian children boosting their digital intelligence. Yes, digital devices are all around us. And among many ways to enhance children's digital skills is by learning coding. But what exactly is coding? Let's have a look. So coding is the most in-demand skill in 21st century. And it also benefits kids' intellectual growth. Learning coding and programming is one of the best ways to prepare your children for the future as well as to enhance their current learning. Now, apart from the obvious educational and career benefits, some research also suggests that coding can help young ones to develop their skills such as time management, perseverance, problem solving, and even their self-confidence. Wow. Now that would make sense, Janaz, because mm -hmm. I, you know, find uh, <laughs> anything to do with computers coding very intimidating. Yeah. So I think mean... if you tackle it at a younger age, this will help your self-confidence. So let's find out more about the benefits of coding for kids. We are now joined by Coding Next COO and co-founder Mateusz Rubinski, along with a student from Coding Next course and Stella Mare School, Ryuto Kayo. Good morning, guys. Thank Hello. you for being here. Hello. Morning. Happy National Children's Day. <laughs> Glad to com commemorate that, uh, and obviously we're taking some time out of uh, Ryuto's morning school classes. Every <laughs> day, right? It's supposed to be in school. So, Mateos, can we start off by explaining a little bit what exactly is coding? Because that mm. co the word coding itself can seem very intimidating. Yeah, I think to basically explain it, coding is a way of communication with uh, devices mm. uh, and. Um, Telling them what exactly we want them to do. Computer language, basically. Yes, a computer language, a language between also human and computer. Okay. 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 Now, what are some popular programming languages for kids? Maybe you can explain more about this. Well, um, I think it doesn't matter that much what kind of language they learn, but um, at the beginning they start from the block coding or a concept of learning coding, not necessarily uh, doing the syntax code, but mm -hmm. using certain blocks. At the age of the kindergarten, they even don't have to read to actually start coding. Mm, really? Yes. Uh, How does that work exactly? Uh, so uh, they, the programming language, uh, certain commands we give, right? So these commands can be text, but that doesn't have to be uh, it can be a symbol, right? So oh. uh, they use some symbolic. Uh, they, they use symbols to program and then to start learning how the programming works. So you can literally start coding before you can even read, basically. Yes. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Why? So we spoke, uh, Mateus, uh, briefly before we came on air, and uh, you mentioned something that is very interesting. I think you should share it to the viewers as well. Why is it important for kids to learn coding? I think they are. Three main reasons. Uh, first reason is um, what you said before, developing the uh, cognitive uh, abilities. Uh, it helps really in uh, logical thinking, problem solving, um, and it uh, also later uh, directly and indirectly help with other subjects like mathematics, but even learning mm -hmm. languages. Uh, so that's the first one. The second one um, is Creating a mindset of a creator uh, means that that's what we say. Instead of just playing games, uh, you can also develop your own game. Mm -hmm. So um, what I mean also by that is right now we are a passive uh, user of uh, devices, mm -hmm. applications. But when you start learning coding, you see it in the, from the different perspective. You started understanding how it works, mm. but also you can have this idea, okay, I can create something what I want, what can yeah. help the society. And just the third one is actually um, the concept of having this 21st century skill. Uh, and uh, because not everybody will be a programmer, right? Mm -hmm. But it can also help in different, um, almost every industry right now in yeah. every profession. So these three main reasons why to learn coding 
from their early childhood. And I, I think I mentioned how intimidating it is for somebody my age, but you mm. also mentioned, Mateus, that you know, kids actually are born into digital technology yeah. already, so it is quite native to them and it comes naturally to them. Yeah, definitely uh, this generation of uh, kindergarten, uh, primary school students mm. has totally different mindset and totally different understanding yeah. of uh, computers, devices than us. They were born when the internet was already yeah. everywhere, mm -hmm. so it's totally um, different than what we yeah how we see the actually the, the technology. That's it's, true. It's like learning a foreign language. It's yeah. a lot easier when you're a kid, yeah. right? It's intimidating to learn it now, but <laughs> <laughs> but Rito, yes. um, I want to know, um, when uh, when you started learning um, coding, how old were you then? It was grade two primary, which is like... Seven? Six, six or seven? Yeah, around that. Wow. wow. Okay. So you've been learning coding for 10 years and and what did you learn so far? Well, from, from grade two, I learned Scratch, like what he said, the block coding. Okay. That was the, from the school curriculums. Oh, okay. And actually, until grade five, mm -hmm. I, wasn't, I wasn't that interested in coding. <laughs> okay. So I just followed the school. Mm -hmm. But until grade six or grade seven, mm -hmm. like, I, always, I like to play games. And wow, I want to make these games too. From there, I learned the trending one, which was Python. Mm -hmm. Then. I move on to C Sharp, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, mm -hmm. and more. And now, like I want to make games using Roblox, the wow. popular game, mm -hmm. or Unity. Okay, so you know, um, you mentioned uh, at the beginning you weren't really that interested in coding. Yeah. What was it exactly that you know got you hooked? I mean, it took you probably a couple of years, right, when you were doing it. What was it? What was the turning point for you that you decided like, hey, this is actually something that is uh, that I am interested in? Because of playing games. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But I played like, I played a lot of games like oh. novel games or yeah, normal shooting games, mm -hmm. which was trending RPGs. and RPGs. Yes. And wow, I also want to make this too. Okay. Mm. And yeah, from that point, I decide, okay, let's go programming. Okay, so that's a very interesting answer, mm -hmm. uh, Mateus, because many kids these days love playing games. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I have nothing against it. Uh, my, in, for, in fact, since the COVID started, I allowed my daughter to have a device. I'm not about to take it away now that mm -hmm. COVID's gone. And I told her, you know, instead of just watching a video, I, mm -hmm. you do have limited time on here, play some games instead, because mm -hmm. it kind of gets your mind working, your reaction times and things like that. What do you think about the progression, Mateus, of games and how it actually gets kids hooked? And do you think it's a, it's a positive thing for kids to be able to use this as a gateway for them to actually be interested in something like coding? Yes, definitely. Uh, so um, they get interested in the technology itself, mostly through the games, through the okay. apps they use. And then um, we also have to say that uh, we, as a society, mm -hmm started struggling with the addiction. Very and um, when I meet uh, parents, sometimes uh, they they have this approach, okay, so if games are addictive, then uh, maybe the coding is not for them because it will make them more addictive. You're afraid that yeah. oh, you're gonna be on the device so much more. But uh, actually, I think it can be a good solution to actually get out from these addictions because mm. um, there are different mechanisms which work uh, on our brain when we play and then we, when we create. Uh, when we create, at the beginning, um, it's very simple, but when we get more advanced, we don't have this instant gratification. Yeah. So uh, actually we learn uh, kids to develop more and more um, complicated projects. And we also help them to um, think a bit longer term than just, and be more uh, focus uh, more um, concentrated on the task when if we just uh, play games of course games can be different as well but in general this is like instant gratification and mm. it's really hook uh, us and um, also the whole industry have a lot of tricks to keep us um, sure. because for, for them uh, the most important is to stay uh, as long as possible with these yeah. games right so uh, I guess uh, it's a bit flip, uh, flipping the um, whole mindset and yeah. thinking from the different perspective and being more into the creativity than just 
passively doing something. Yeah, yeah. simply put, uh, instead yeah. of letting the device control us, it's a way we of us control. being able to control the Very device. Very good like yeah. game. But my concern is, um, uh, Matthias, um, how do you make sure that uh, the kids uh, that are um, learning coding is doing the right thing? Because me, myself, I don't know about coding. How do you assist them to make sure that they're doing their thing? Well, of course, uh, during the lessons we can control it. And then also our approach is to uh, teach coding by giving the um, challenges or the task which can also develop the idea of uh, different environmental or society problems. So we uh, try to match it with SDG goals. Uh, we mm. have a, a competition every year which is focused on certain environmental problem. And oh, then we okay. try to even uh, eight, 10 years old students start thinking how they can solve these problems or how can at least educate other students about this problem. So, um, our approach is to think, uh, to show them how they can actually uh, use these uh, skills to do good. Okay. Yeah, and I think the possibilities are endless. I mean, you start off, maybe the gateway is games, but there's mm. so many applications for this in the future as well. So, Yuto, I mean, you've done this for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. So, probably in the beginning, you never even thought of a uh, possible future career in coding. But what about now? Has, this, has your mindset changed somewhat? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think you can? Uh, and along the way, you have learned. How much have you progressed throughout your coding experience in ten years? Where do you think you are on the scale of uh, how how much you've learned, as opposed to how much more you still need to learn to where to get to where you want to be? Well, from one to ten, I rate myself like six or seven. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I still have a lot of opportunities to learn. Mm. Like there. Are, yeah, there's still a lot of frameworks or language that I haven't learned yet okay. and I want to learn now. How much time do you spend, um, let's say, in a week or on a daily mm. basis? Well, actually, it depends on my mood also. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. For, like, these recent days, I rarely code because I was, be I'm, well, it was holiday, right? Okay. And before holiday, it was also exam, exam week. True. Yeah. So I didn't code at all. Uh -uh. But uh, when I have free time, uh -uh. Like, I want to code now, actually. Really? <laughs> okay. So, tell me more about what you're working on yeah. right now. You recently have a project. Mm, I want to... From the previous project I made. Yes. Yeah. So, one of my biggest projects I made is... So, in my school, there's a student council. And I was asked to... Actually, for the, for the previous year, uh -huh. there was no student council website. Okay. okay yeah. Which contains like the mission and vision, members, houses. And for this time, I made a student console website. Uh, we go I think we're going to try to put it up here as well. I think mm -hmm. our team. For, oh, for, let's discuss this one. <laughs> what, so, what about this one? This one? Oh, for this, this is calculator. Calculator and math game. Uh -huh. I made this when I was beginner, like grade 7 or grade 8. Okay, this was a few years ago then. <laughs> yeah, using C-sharp language. Okay. Oh, but, that's a time stable. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a Sudoku. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> well, for this project, it only took me like mm, two or three days. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I still count this one is still simple game. Okay, sure. And this was obviously when you were in, in sixth or seventh grade, so you've only had been doing yeah. it for probably two, three years at the time. Okay. okay, so go on, go on about your, you're telling us about your most recent project, which was for your school student council. Yeah, the student council website. Oh, it took, well, it took me one week, but... Week, okay. I didn't sleep at all. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> one thing for me is, when I started to do something, some project, mm -hmm. if I stop it and I do it the next day, I, like, I will forget and it... You lose your yeah. momentum a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Okay. You lose the feels. Yeah. So you worked on this on your own or did you have a team? My own. On, really? On yeah. so you completed the entire student council website. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. But what is your um, favorite part about coding? Mm. My favorite part? Well, where I can share my code. I can help my friends with Aww. coding. Yeah. That's really That's nice. nice. And uh, your friends are open to this? Like they, they love, they like it when you introduce yeah. what you've learned to them? Yeah. Usually for what I share to what I help my friends is, when, for example, tomorrow we have a daily test and 
I make a like memorizing website. Mm. For example, for German class, mm. there's like a lot of vocab vocabs. Right? Yeah. So I make like a list of vocabs and a quiz, German quiz, and I share it to my friends. <laughs> like, guys, this is a website. Go play. Go spam play it. So it's kind of like uh, it makes it fun for them as well, right? Yeah. Wow. Nice. Okay. So you know, Mateus, not every, unfortunately though, not um, a lot of uh, students and children in Indonesia are lucky enough to have coding as part of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Rito was introduced to it uh, even when he was not yet interested into it, and it got him interested into it. What is your thoughts about having things like coding and programming integrated into? coding and uh, programming integrated into, say, primary or even secondary schools across Indonesia. Is that even a possibility? Uh, well, this is my uh, personal mission to mm -hmm. actually allow it. Um, of course, um, there is uh, several problems related to that. Uh, first of all, infrastructure problem. Mm -hmm. So there are still schools without electricity. Uh, and this, I don't know how to cope by, sure. <laughs> by what we do. Uh, and the lack of uh, internet coverage is uh, problematic. But there are problems which uh, I believe uh, we know how to solve. Uh, one of it is uh, lack of the um, teachers who could actually uh, teach it. So yeah. uh, that's a challenge and also Curriculum for coding is um, challenging from different perspective because it's not like a mathematic or even English language, which you don't have to change it that often. Mm -hmm. But uh, for uh, coding, actually, it's, it's really changing a lot. Uh, we've been doing Coding Next for seven years, and almost every year there are some changes in the curriculum to, because otherwise it would be very uh, obsolete. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so um, I believe it's uh, if we have uh, internet coverage and um, some devices uh, at schools, uh, the rest can be fixed, I, I believe. Uh, and of course, there are some countries uh, in the world which is a standard. Mm. And I believe that should be standards uh, everywhere. I agree. Lucky for you. <laughs> so if you guys want to find out more, uh, Coding Next is uh, the largest, uh, um, basically, what you guys offer in all of uh, South Asia. You offer both online and offline courses. If you guys want to find out more, please do check out, uh, I've just opened their Instagram. It's Coding Next, uh, that's with a K. And uh, there's many locations, not just for those of you that live in Jakarta, but outside of the, our uh, capital right now as well, um, in other cities around. Yeah, we are very proud because uh, for now we are the only coding school for kids which are in all three uh, time zones of Indonesia so <laughs> I've seen uh, Pajo is uh, today in Jayapura if That's you are right. in Jayapura there is also coding next. is that right nice. yeah, it is, it is, it is. and it's uh, there's courses for anywhere from four-year-olds all the way through yes. 16 wow there okay. you go so uh, Mateus thank you so much for thank coming you. by and for sharing with us uh, and of course Yuto continued success with you keep it up <laughs> an amazing you. young man <laughs> Glad to have you both here, obviously in commemoration of Hari Anak National or National Children's Day. Hey, we're going to talk more about <laughs> National Children's Day when we return and perhaps play a little game. Not a coding game, but more of a quiz. We'll be yeah. right back with that after this. <laughs> I'm going to lose for sure. <laughs>